So you want to make some pretty cool intros and make them unique and different to what people are usually seeing, right? I haven't really thought about what I'm going to say in the intro. All right, so welcome to the beautiful world of After Effects. And uh, I've got to admit, before I even recorded the green screen section of the tutorial, I had no idea what I was doing. So this was a huge learning experience. And I've already done a whole example before, before I even did the tutorial, just to make sure I know what I was doing. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to show you quite a lot of tricks to make your videos look good. It doesn't necessarily relate to transitions sometimes. Sometimes it might be related to just little tricks to save time in After Effects. But along the way, I'm going to show you how to get that transition effect and make a cool intro. So uh, the first thing we're going to start out with is just keying out the green screen here. You can see that it's flapping around in the wind a bit, which is not too big of a deal. And we're only going to need a basic key. And I'm not going to be that big in screen in the final result. That's not going to be that big of a deal. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go type in key here and we're going to grab the key light 1.2. And uh, with that, we're going to just select the screen color. We're going to do, I guess this is an average color here. Okay, it's all right. So we're getting some of that light from the sun. Don't worry, we'll be, we'll be able to clean that. So under the screen mat here, uh, and before that, instead of the final result, let's just go to the screen mat and you can see a white and black. Now in this example, anything that's white, you'll see anything that's black will be transparent. So what we need to do is to get me fully white and the, the green screen fully black. So I'm going to clip the black to the point where I can almost get away with it with me, but I've got to be careful because now it's going to start cutting into me. So I've got to turn that back just a little bit. I'm going to go as far as I can. I'm also watching this section here with the light on the green screen. Just going to reduce that a little bit. There we go. And then also clipping white. I'll take that down a bit and make sure the white goes as white as it possibly can. Now, just to quickly check the final results again, I can do final results and see what it looks like. It's okay. It's not the greatest, but it's going to blend in as well with the background that I have. But there are a couple other ways to clean up this green screen. So I'm just going to go back to the screen mat. So I'm just going to clip the rule back a little bit and it might go a little fuzzy at some points. And there's definitely a, a space where you shouldn't go further. So it just depends on your situation. Green screens can look different in every shot. So and you can shrink the green on the edges or you can grab it, whichever you want. I'm going to see what shrinking negative one does. That's pretty decent. It'll get away some of the, the edges on the sides there. So not too bad. And I'll just increase the softness by maybe one. That just kind of feathers the outside a little bit. And so that's not a bad key. And well, you can see there's a bit of that reflection and stuff. Don't worry, I'll show you how to fix that later if you can't do it in the key light section here. So let's just go down here and we're going to mask the outside because obviously we don't want this. So I'm just going to press G on my keyboard and I'm just going to draw a mask around. All right. Now, once I've drawn my mask, you can see that there's an alpha background. There's a completely see through and I'm just going to scrub through this and see if there's any stuff. So you can see I go out of the mask. So I'm going to pull up the mask here. I'm going to keyframe the mask path and I'm just going to drag it out a bit just to follow me just so that it doesn't cut my body off. I'm just going to go back in time and just adjust it a bit more wherever I need to. Okay, and so once we've finished the keying and everything, I'm just going to drag in my first image here. Now you can obviously use video footage. I'm just going to use an image because this in my situation it just worked the best for me and it's what I had. And I'm just going to pull myself down a little bit, maybe like that. And uh, the scale seems okay. Uh, just make sure that in your scene that you look relatively normal. Uh, nothing looks disproportionate and I'm not too small or too big in the scene. And just a quick note at the end here, I'm also going to show you how to make this scene look a little bit more like video rather than an image in the background. We can add some realistic movement to it. I'm just going to mute the audio for just a second. But what I'm going to do is down in the scene here, I'm going to find where I do that transition right over here. So halfway through it, I'm going to say, I'm going to grab the position here. I'm just going to go back before it happens, put a position keyframe, go to the end of it and move it all the way out of frame. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the other background, which is just the forest here. I'm just going to mute it 
and I'm actually going to invert it and I'm also going to grab up the position property I'm going to keyframe that and then I'm going to go back to the first keyframe on the other one and I'm just going to move the position out all the way to the outside of the other side of the frame so now we essentially just have this there we go that should be good in fact I'm going to scale it up a little bit more I'll say like that now obviously I'm too big in the scene here don't worry I'll show you how to get that done as well so let's see how long it takes for the transition to happen. Okay, clearly it's going to have to go a bit faster. So let's just drag those keyframes closer. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to add motion blur here. If you don't see these, just press F4 and you'll be able to reveal the motion blur and it's activated here because it's blue. Now if I go back and just redo this, let's see what it looks like. You can see there's a bunch of motion blur which makes it look really nice. Okay, so the timing's pretty good. Maybe it's a little too soon. So let's just drag it ahead in time a little bit. Alright, and then I'm also just going to keyframe my scale and position here. So press S and then hold Shift and press P. You can have both of these properties up at the same time. I'm just going to keyframe that. I'm going to go down in time. I'm going to scale it down. So let's go... Yeah, I'd say maybe about there. Let's Take a look and see what that looks like. So I'm going to make that happen in the middle here whilst the transition is happening. Just kind of lengthen it a bit. Okay, so not bad. Now clearly I don't match any of the scenes, so I'm going to do some color grading. But before that, I'm going to do that last. Before that, I'm going to actually add some elements in front so that when the transition happens, some of the stuff comes in front of me, kind of adds some nice dynamicness to it, and also covers up the transition a little bit, and maybe just covers up some other mistakes as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the image from the first background, I'm going to drag it on top of my layer, and let's just go ahead and key out this for a second, I'm just going to use the mask first, I'm just going to drag a mask roughly around it, and then I'm going to grab the key light, drag it onto that layer, and just key the water out and again I'm just going to go into the screen mat and just mess around with the settings here all right I'd say that looks pretty decent so let's just drag this down a bit maybe we'll scale it up a bit as well and then I'm just going to pick whip it to the background layer that it has so when it moves across you'll see it moves in front of me like that but I'm also going to add motion blur to it so when I turn the motion blur on you'll see it kind of is blurry. Um, let me just scale it up a little bit more as well. All right, so that looks good. Goes in front. And actually what I want to do is just move it out in the end there. So let's just position it a bit more this way. Go to the end of the keyframe here. Let's go down some frames. You can see it's still here. So what I'm going to do is right when it stops, I'm going to grab the position. I'm going to keyframe that. I'm going to drag it in front of time and then I'm going to move it out just a little bit here. Just enough to where it's outside of the frame. So now if I do a quick preview here, you'll see it moves across. So very nice. It moves in front of me too, which is kind of kind of nice. It adds some, it kind of sells the effect a bit more as well. So I'm also going to do that with the tree. So I'm going to grab that other, the second background here. And I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to go to time. I'm going to go to freeze frame and I'm just going to pick this tree over here. Press G on the keyboard for the pen tool and I'm just going to drag around the tree and just trace it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be that perfect because it's going to be blurry. Okay, and then I'm going to feather the mask by like three and then I'm going to scale that up just enough to cover the top and bottom of the frame. So that's good there. And I'm going to drag it out of the frame for the first shot here. I'm going to pick whip it to the background of the other layer. That way when it moves across, you'll see it does the same thing here. But actually you can see it's not quite covering that transition. So I'm going to move it over a bit, maybe like that. Let's see if what it looks like here. Okay, so it's still in frame here. So I'm going to keyframe it right about here probably. Let's go to the position. Let's drag that one frame down. And let's just move it out of the frame. That way it comes in like that and goes through. 
and we're gonna have to keyframe it at the end here as well so keyframe here go down one frame and I'm just gonna move it out a bit more I'm gonna add motion blur to it that way it looks nice kind of hides that transition a bit and it's in front of me that looks quite nice and just uh, another thing here I have a shrub I'm just going to drag it down here and I'm actually going to grab the color key drag it on here get white take the tolerance up quite a bit and it doesn't matter if it eats a bit into the bush because it still looks pretty good like that then I'm just going to grab my pen tool and just mask the other stuff away that I don't want and I'm going to put it about here let's scale that up a bit as well and then I'm also going to pick whip that to the background and you can see that it's doing its thing now I'm obviously going to have to move it out of the frame here so let's move that like that let's get down the frames here okay obviously we're going to have to have it in frame so go down I'm going to press P position go down one frame and then drag it in to about there and then once it goes through perfect it's out of frame maybe we want it in frame if we do I'll just add a keyframe right over here go down one frame and drag it in to let's say for the argument's sake we want it there add motion blur to it So not bad but let's say you don't want that shrub in there so let's just delete those keyframes in the end and it's gone now obviously i don't look so realistic in this scene so what i'm going to do is with my layer selected i'm going to duplicate it with Control d the layer underneath what i'm going to do is i'm just going to rotate it i'm going to actually hide the mask so it doesn't interfere i'm going to rotate it drag it down here i'm also going to squeeze it a bit and actually you can see that it's got some other position properties here so let's remove these here and I'm just going to pick whip it to the layer above it that way it sticks to it and let's just rotate it a bit more here I'm going to make it almost 90 degrees because that's kind of what the trees have here next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the curves I'm going to apply the curves to this layer and I'm just going to bring the highlights all the way down that way it's black it's going to create like a shadow I'm going to get the fast blur CC radial fast blur put it on the same layer and you can take it up not too much because it is a green screen layer and you'll see those edges come up so just a little bit enough to kind of soften the edges a bit and I'm going to press T on the keyboard take the opacity down something like that will make it faint and then I'll just grab the mask here and I'm just going to cut the bottom of the feet off a little bit just to kind of add a a feather to it and press F and just take the feather up to let's say 8 and I'm actually going to have to move it down a bit and I'll just squeeze it in a bit more one thing I will do is obviously like it stays there the whole time it does everything this other layer does because it's pick whipped to it so what I'm going to do is back in the previous comp here or the previous scene I'm going to actually just cut it off with Control shift D and just delete that first part because I don't need it in here all the shadows are very soft and there's not really a lot of harsh sun unfortunately there is a bit of harsh sun on my face we'll be able to fix that a little bit with color grading but obviously when you're shooting with your green screen make sure that whatever you're shooting the look kind of matches the scene that you want to put yourself in I didn't know what I wanted to put myself in so it was kind of a little bit ambiguous in the beginning but uh, obviously it matches this scene a bit because there are some branches and, and leaves stuff from the sun on me so it suited this scene very well but not the previous scene although I could change the background to make it match a bit more but for the sake of the tutorial we're going to keep it like that I'm also going to do some color grading so you can I can show you how to match that up a bit so with the layer selected I'm just going to go and grab my curves I'm going to apply it to the layer and so in the curves I'm going to go to the blue channel here I'm going to just bring the blue up a little bit kind of match the background a bit because it's very blue I'm going to go to the RGB and let's just add a small curves here so let's take down the brights kind of make it dark a bit and let's do the darks down a bit a little bit as well okay so that matches the scene a bit more maybe I'll take a little bit of green out not too much or in fact maybe putting some green in it takes some very slight tweaks and sometimes it's the slightest things that help and I'm just going to go to the red channel adjust that a little bit in its way that needs to go so sometimes these tiny tweaks make a difference so if I turn it off it's a little too 
unnatural for the scene. If I just turn it back on, it kind of matches a bit more. In addition to that, I'm going to add a curves adjustment to the whole scene. So what I'm going to do is to create a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to do another curves effect on here. This way it affects everything. I'm just going to add a slight S curve to it. Drag down the shadows and then I'm going to drag up the... Whoops. I don't want to do the red. Go back to RGB. I'm going to drag up the highlights a bit. Kind of add a bit of contrast there. And sometimes the slightest ones work better than the extreme ones. So with it off and then with it on, it helps kind of blend the scene a bit more. Now during the transition, when I go into the next scene, it may not match as much. So if we just take a look here, it's not too bad. But what I'm going to do is on this layer with the curves color grading, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go halfway through the scene. I'm going to add a keyframe to the curves here. And let's go just over here to where we can see. Now I'm going to obviously add a bit of green into here because I'm in a green environment. So if I just drag that up, add a little bit of green, not too much. Uh, maybe we'll just play with the red channels a bit and see what looks good. Let's take the reds up a bit and maybe we'll take some blue out. Yeah, kind of add it, make it a little bit warm. Let's go to the RGB channels. Let's see what we can do here. Let's take the, yeah, the shadows are okay, I guess. Take it down a bit, maybe. And adjust the highlights take the highlights down as well a little bit and yeah that looks pretty good obviously that doesn't match there with the curves off if i turn it on it looks much better and if i turn the main adjustment layer on and off you can also see the difference here it helps blend the effect as well now i'm just going to press u on the keyboard here i'm going to go to the curves effect here i'm just going to zoom in on my timeline and when this transition happens i'm going to drag that keyframe there so that transition with the color on the curves happens during the transition where you don't see it happening. So pretty good actually. It's a lot better than the test that I did before. So looking pretty good. And there's only there's so much you can do with this. It doesn't necessarily have to be just this effect. There's so many different ways you can use this. But hopefully this gave you a little bit of inspiration. But yeah, tiny tweaks like that and you can just tweak it as much as you want and it'll just, it'll go forever really. So yeah, pretty cool tutorial. If you guys enjoyed and you're new, consider subscribing, stick around for the future. I do a lot of visual effects, editing, Premiere Pro, After Effects, uh, streaming, setups, all that kind of stuff. So stick around for that if you're interested. Leave a like, it really help the channel out. But until next time, remember, keep smiling, keep shooting.